May we now rise for the angels. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The angel of the Lord declared unto Mary, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. And the world's made with flesh. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Pray for us, Holy Mother of God. Let us pray. Pray for us to beseech you, O Lord, your grace into our hearts, that we to whom the incarnation of Christ your Son was men done by the message of an angel. May by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection. Through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. May the divine assistance always remain with us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it's now, and ever shall be world without end. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it's now, and ever shall be world without end. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it's now, and ever shall be world without end. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. This Mass is said for the following intentions. Birthday Thanksgiving for Mary A. Motayo Ajayi. Birthday Thanksgiving for Legend Group, Divine Providence and Good Health for Anthony Cardinal Okoje. Mrs. Caroline Philomena Sotunde, thanking God for his favors goodness and mercy upon her. Praying also for the repose of soul of Midrom, Grace Chinwe Ifiora. Praying also for the happy repose of Elsa A. Oduwenu, Victoria M. Adeyemi, and Pre C O H A Accra. Glory to Jesus.
of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We gather together once again this afternoon to call on the Lord's name, to be able to do so worthily. Let us call to mind our sins, most especially the times that we have not professed sufficiently our faith in God. We want to beg God for pardon for these times. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I have blessed and in virgin all the years and sins. And you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May the Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, direct our actions according to your good pleasure, that in the name of your beloved Son, we may abound in good works. For our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the second book of Samuel. The Lord sent Nathan to the, the prophet to David. He came to him and said, In the same town were two men, one rich, the other poor. The rich man had flocks and herds in great abundance. The poor man had nothing but a ewe lamb one only, a small one he had bought. This he fed, and it grew up with him and his children, eating his bread, drinking from his cup, sleeping on his breast. It was like a daughter to him. When there came a traveler to stay, the rich man refused to take one of his own flock or herd to provide for the wayfarer who had come to him. Instead, he took the poor man's lamb and prepared it for his guests. David's anger flared up against the man. As the Lord lives, he said to Nathan, The man who did this deserves to die. He must make fourfold restitution for the lamb. For doing such a thing, and showing no compassion. Then Nathan said to David, You are the man, so now the sword will never be far from your house, since you have shown contempt for me and taken the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be your wife. Thus the Lord speaks, I will stir up evil for you out of your own house. Before your very eyes, I will take your wives and give them to your neighbor. And he shall lie with your wives in the sight of the sun. You walked in secret. I will walk this in the face of all Israel and in the face of the sun. David said to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. Then Nathan said to David, the Lord for his part forgives your sin. You are not to die. Yet, because you have outraged the Lord by doing this, the child that is born to you is to die. Then Nathan went home. The Lord struck the child that Uriah's wife had born to David, and it fell gravely ill. David pleaded with the Lord for the child. He kept a strict fast and went home and spent the night on the bare ground, covered with sacking. The officials of his household came and stood round him to get him to rise from the ground. But he refused, nor would he take food with them. The word of the Lord. The response to the sound is, A pure heart create for me, O God. A pure heart create for me, O God. A pure heart create for me, O God. A pure heart create for me, O God.
A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. With the coming of the evening, Jesus said to his disciples, Let us cross over to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him, just as he was in the boat. And there were other boats with him. Then he began to blow a gale, and the winds were breaking into the boat so that it was almost it was almost sinking. But he was in the stern, he his head on the cushion asleep. They woke him and said to him, Master, do you not care? We are going down. And he woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Quiet now, be still. And the wind dropped and all was calm again. Then he, asked, then he said to them, Why are you frightened? How is it that you have no faith? They were all filled with awe and said to one another, Who can, be, who can this be? Even the wind and the sea obey him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good afternoon, children. I hope you are happy to be here for this Mass today. We gather here once again this afternoon to thank the good Lord for giving us the grace to see another day. And we are here reflecting this afternoon on faith in God, reflecting on the need to have faith in God to save us and to forgive us our sins. In the gospel reading of today, we read that the disciples of Jesus who were in the boat with him after he suggested that they cross to the other side, took him with them. They took Jesus into the boat and they were on the sea. However, no sooner were they in the boat while Jesus was sleeping when the great storm arose and the waves beat into the boat why Jesus was sleeping and the wave was so big that the boat was almost swamped and the disciples of Jesus became panicking supposing you were in that boat Jesus was in the boat and Jesus was sleeping and there was a great song. What will you do? We read that the disciples of Jesus woke him up and asked him if he did not care that they perish. They were afraid. Let me ask you, children. Supposing you are in the boat with Jesus, will you be afraid? I say, will you be afraid? I can't hear you. You will not be afraid. 
when there is storm, will you wake him up or will you just leave him to continue to sleep? Just like the disciples did. So why will you wake him up? We are all like the disciples. They woke Jesus up. And Jesus rebuked and commanded the sea to be still, and the sea became calm again. But Jesus queried his disciples for being afraid, and he rebuked them for their lack of faith. They woke him because they lacked faith. They woke him because they imagined if he were sleeping, he would not know what is happening to them. But let me tell you something. The disciples of Christ at that point in their lives did not know the person of Jesus. Who Jesus was. Do you know who Jesus is? I said, do you know who Jesus is? I can't hear you. Thank God. The disciples at that time were still in the process of learning and developing their faith in Jesus. But that day they learned a great lesson. They learned that Jesus was able to deal with all situations of life and that he was also aware of their predicaments. What that tells us is that Jesus is aware of everything that is happening to us. Whether you are sleeping, whether he's around, whether he's walking away from us, he's aware of everything that is happening to us. I hope you believe this. Whether you are going to school, whether you are coming from school, whether you are flying, whether you are on the sea, whether you are in the car, Jesus is what? He's aware of all what is happening to us. And it reminds us, that God never sleeps. Our God is always alive. We are also being reminded today that God sees everything. He knows everything. The church reminds us today that as humans, when we are confronted with frightening and terrible experience beyond us, the tendency is there to panic. When this happens suddenly to us, as humans, we panic. It is not a sin to panic, but when things happen, even when you panic, you turn to God. And you beg God to intervene in a special way. And the experience of today tells us that God will always intervene. Oftentimes or not, we forget about Jesus' assurance that he's always present. We believe more in what we see than the unseen. Today we have been encouraged to repose faith in Jesus and to renew our faith in God, even when we do not know how solution will be preferred to our problems, and that even when he does not remove us from the storm, Jesus reassures us that he is with us through the stormy times. Because we are Jesus' children does not mean that we are not going to have storm. Things will happen to us that will make us to panic, that will terrify us, but we have the assurance that God is with us and is always in charge. We have been reminded today, my dear children, that God is always faithful. We are the ones who doubt. How many of you doubt? Do you doubt sometimes? I said, do you doubt sometimes? Yes. But today we have been reminded that God is always faithful. Today we are being reminded to recall the times 
when we have enjoyed God's assistance and help in difficult and trying situations, when there seemed not to be a way, but the Lord provided a way. Sometimes something happened to you, you wonder, how am I going to get out of this situation? And then suddenly, you find yourself getting out of that situation through whose help? Through whose help? The help of God. Today, we are being reminded also that what we need to do always is to call upon him in our hour of need. Like the disciples did in the boat when Jesus was sleeping. And when we do, Jesus will surely calm the storm. And so, my dear children, the starting point for each and every one of us is faith in Jesus' ability to save us. And so I ask you, do you believe in Christ's ability to save you? Do you believe in Jesus' ability to protect you? Do you believe in Jesus' ability to get you out of big troubles? Yes. That is what we are learning once again today. God is able. And so you must not be afraid. Let me tell you a story of one beautiful little girl about your age. The father of this girl took her to one tall building at that time. It was the tallest building in Manhattan in New York. It was the twin tower that was bombed some years back by the terrorists. So the father went on the tour and then he got to the highest point. And then he carried the little girl and then made her to look down. And then the girl was just playing. And then the father said to the little girl, are you not afraid? Do you know what the little girl said to the father? He said, why should I be afraid? I'm in my father's hand. And that is what the Lord is saying to you today. He has your back. And you should not be afraid because always you are in whose hand? You are in whose hand? In your father's hand. So that is what we must keep always in our heart and mind. In the first reading of today, from the second book of Samuel, we read about King David, who believed in God's ability to save and to forgive. And because of his belief in God's ability to save and to forgive, he turned to God after falling into grave sin of adultery and murder. Grave sin of adultery and murder. And when he turned to God, God forgave him his sins. Do you know why? Because he believed. If you believe that God is able, whatever you ask him, God does for you. David, after meeting with Nathan, the prophet that was sent to him, after his committed sin, he realized his sin. And that is what the beautiful girl read for us in the responsorial psalm. He read the penitential psalm of David. David realized that he has committed sin. And he turned to God in faith. And God did what? God forgave him. And that is also a lesson that you should take away from here. No matter what your sin may be, you must always turn back to God in faith to ask for forgiveness. I hope you all go to confession. I say I hope you go to confession when you commit sin. It is not sufficient to go to confession. 
you must have faith in God that he is able to forgive. Some people have lost faith in God to forgive their sins. And that is why they don't go to confession. But today you are being reminded in all things that you do, you must repose faith in God. In God's ability to save you from all dangers. In God's ability to save you from your sin. The greatest, the gravest danger that we can be in is sin. Because sin can cut us off eternally from God. And so you must have faith in Christ to deliver you, to forgive you your sins. And for those of you who have not been going to confession regularly, you are being reminded once again today that like David, you must turn to God and ask for forgiveness for sins. And so we pray today that God will increase our faith in him. We pray that he will deliver us and save us whenever we turn to him in faith in all our troubles. We make all these our prayers through Christ our Lord. Life has been compared to a journey, a journey made in faith, a pilgrimage to often made in hope. There is the occasional gale, the storms of life that frighten us and make us want to give up, to turn back. We need the, we need the state center of a strong faith in God to help us on the way. Let us pray that in these difficult days of wars and remorse of wars, the church may give strong witness to faith in God and hope in the future. We pray, O oh Lord. himself in this day may inspire the doubting and the doubtful to a life of faith, hope, and love. We pray, O oh Lord. Let us pray that in all we do and say, this day and always, we may support and not weaken the faith of those around us. We pray, O oh Lord. Let 
us pray that the young people of this community, let us pray that God may forgive those of us who by our lives make it difficult for others to, for others to believe in his love, mercy, and forgiveness. We pray, O oh Lord. Let us pray that the young people of this community may find a joyful faith in their families and an encouragement of to faith in their community. We pray, O oh Lord. Pray for the Missionary Childhood Association that God will grant us the grace and zeal to function according to His call. We pray, O oh Lord. silence of our hearts, let us now add our own personal intentions. We ask the intercession of Mary our mother as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. God our Father, mindful of your goodness, we place our prayers before you. Grant us all we need today to live our lives in the shadow of your presence, Make this prayer through Christ our Lord.
and sisters that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the grace and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept our offerings, O Lord, we pray, and in sanctifying them, grant that they may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Bring them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation. Always and ever to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in goodness you created man. And when he was justly condemned, in mercy you redeemed him through Christ our Lord. Throw him the angels, praise your majesty, dominions, adore, and pass, tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exhortation. May our voices we pray join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy God of the most, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is you come to the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are uh, indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy therefore this gift, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given off for you. In a similar way, when supper was sended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink meat, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do there is a memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Alfred Martins, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. That with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, our spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, may Mary to be called her sweet and alive, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. From 
for him and with him and in him, O God Almighty, Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Are the Savior's command informed by divine teaching we dare to say? What in heaven? I live thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who have us, and lead us not to temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Cheerfully grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but the faith of your church, and graciously grant uh, peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. of the world, blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb.
For the benefit of those joining us at home for this Mass, we we'll take the art of spiritual communion. O oh Jesus, we believe that you are truly present in the most blessed sacrament of the altar. We adore you, we love you above all things, and we desire with all our hearts to receive you into our soul. But since we cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into our souls, and remain there forever. We embrace you as though you have already come. We unite ourselves entirely to you. Do not permit us to be ever separated from you again. Amen. O sacrament most holy. O sacrament most holy.
O sacraments most holy. Jesus, in the most blessed sacrament of the altar, have mercy on the dying. Jesus, in the most blessed sacrament of the altar, have mercy on the dead. Jesus, in the most blessed sacrament of the altar, grant us a holy and happy death. Prayer for an end to the coronavirus pandemic. O oh God, I help in ages past. We, your children, humbly implore your mercy at this time of adversity. We are devastated by the coronavirus pandemic that is ravaging the whole world, snuffing life out of your people and spreading fear everywhere. You are the God of life and nothing is impossible to you. You ask us to call you in the day of trouble and you will answer us. We know that we are sinners who are unworthy of your favors. Although we have no merit of our own to please before you, we stand on the merit of the death and resurrection of Christ and plead the saving blood over our lives and situation. We ask you to be merciful to us and save us from the scourge that is devastating the world. Be gracious to us and speak life and healing into the present coronavirus scourge and command it to depart from our world. Give leaders of government and scientists divine wisdom and knowledge to take the right decisions and to discover the medication needed to cure people who are infected with this virus. Protect all health workers and volunteers. Look with pity on those who are already infected with this deadly virus and heal them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died from it and comfort those left behind to more than demise. Lord, through this scourge, may the heart Saint Raphael the Archangel, all angels and saints of God. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that receiving the grace by which you bring us to new life, we may always glory in your gift through Christ our Lord. Receive our prayers, O Lord. Receive our prayers. Receive our prayers, O Lord. Receive our prayers, O Lord. The glory and honor we give unto you. Receive our praise, oh Lord. Oh Lord, receive our praise, receive our praise, oh Lord. Receive our praise, oh Lord. The glory and honor we give unto you. Receive our praise. Ba 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 mi loke ba ba. Ba 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 
You are God, you are not just big, you are not just a you are a great God, say you are God, oh, you are God, you are not just big, you are not just a you are a great God, say you are big, oh, you are big, 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 and you are great, 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 great. You are a great God. We go to hell. Hell, your name. Day by day. All the way, all the way. We go to hell. Hell, your name. For a mirror, but I found no one, nobody like you. I've been so many places searching for a better life, but I found no one, nobody like you, nobody like you. Oh my Jesus, Oh my Jesus, Good afternoon, very Reverend Father, Reverend Fathers, sisters, brothers and sisters. Good afternoon, children, children. With children all over the world, are we happy to be here today? Are you sure? If you are a friend of Jesus, let me see you stand up and give Jesus a clap. Let's give Jesus our children a clap. Children, children, we are friends of Jesus. Children. Children, we are friends of Jesus. Please sit down. Thank you very much. It is my pleasure this afternoon to stand here. Um, the last Saturday of this month of January, the first month of the year 2022, we are here as MCA, Children of Lagos Archdiocese, to so thank God in a very special way for the gift of our lives for our parents, for our patrons, for our patronesses, for our animators, and to pray to God for ourselves, children of our country, Nigeria, and children of the whole world. It is our prayer today that the thanksgiving that we have offered to God will be acceptable to him through Christ our Lord. I also want to thank in a very special way today um, our Archbishop in absentia, at whose permission we are always here to do this every last Saturday of the month. We thank him for his fatherly support to us in MCA Lagos Archdiocese, Most Reverend Alfred Adewale Martins. We pray that God will continue to bless and strengthen him through Christ our Lord. Amen. I also want to thank our Cathedral Administrator, Very Reverend Father Paul Ijasso and his assistant, Father Raymond Emedo, 
for giving us the permission always to be here for our MCA Dinary Mass celebration. We ask God to continue to bless them in Jesus' name. Amen. Today, MCA Maryland Dinary. Thank you very much for coming out. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I must say that we are blessed today to have in our MCA media record, Lagos Archdiocese, that we have the pleasure of having our dean, the first dean ever that has come out for our dinary mass. No. From Maryland Dinary, we are grateful and thankful to our dean, very reverend father anthony faderu father thank you sir. yes we are blessed are we blessed yes. mca maryland dinary children are you blessed yes. we thank god for his blessings and we are also blessed to have our chaplain with us the chaplain for mca maryland dinary Reverend Father Paul Pastors. Now together we'll give them our MCA clap. Children, children, we are friends of Jesus. I want to invite our very special dinner coordinator for Maryland, Maryland, Reverend Sister Zita Adigwe OLA. All over the world, we children all over the world. Thank you for making out time to come out once again. I'm here to say a very big thank you to our PMS director, Reverend Father Simeon Irabo. He's ever ready, he's always ready and he never gets tired in seeing that MCA moves forward to greater heights in the Archdiocese. I also so thank you to our Archdiocese and Coordinator, Reverend Sister Doris Gary, who is also relentless, seeing that things go well. Thank you, Sister, for always being there for us anytime we call. We say thank you to you children for your coming out, your ability to accept to be part of this association. We also pray for children who are denied opportunities to serve God in a special way that God will open doors for them and grant them good guidance and parents that will lead them in the path of Christ through Christ our Lord. Amen. We cannot but thank the functionaries for this uh, liturgical celebration. We thank the choir from the Catholic Church, the St. Michael Catholic Church, K2. Thank you, St. Michael, you have done so well. Thank you for leading us in the songs. A lecture from St. Flavius Owaran Shoki. Thank you very much. A beautiful psalmist from the Catholic Church of the Resurrection, Magodo. We say thank you for leading us through the psalms of the day. We also say thank you to all those who led us through the prayer of the faithful from the Catholic Church in uh, St. Maryland and St. Raphael, Anthony Village. We say thank you to the two parishes. Our church orders, we also say thank you for your coordination from the Church of the Presentation, Agility. May God continue to bless us all. And all those who also have functions to perform after the mass, the rosaries, and all others that are lined up for the recording. We say thank you in anticipation. Do not get tired in the work of God. We thank our parents in a most special way that have supported us and also instruct us in the path that we should go. With children all over the world, we children all over the world.
The Lord be with you. I may the Almighty God bless the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Catholic in book in three hundred.